Go ahead and get started. Although I'm checking over a text to make sure that we're okay. I'm I'm aware we're working on getting the captioning. There's apparently a misunderstanding about the Zoom links, so we're working on getting that to them. So I'm going to go ahead and start with some announcements. If you, Ron, if you. Welcome to our final day of the business meeting, everyone. Um, I'm going to say that we are in order. It's a time. I <laughs> the secretary knows what it was. 10.05. Great. Um, my clock went away. Um, so a few announcements. Um, first of all, um, update on our non-emergency holographic secretary. Alex is doing OK. They're not any worse. I don't know to what degree they're any better. but. They're hanging in there. They are being taken care of by friends. So um, I just know that some folks are wanting an update on that. So COVID sucks, y'all. Um, let's see. Uh, today's coffee and tea service is provided by, wait, which Kevin? Stanley. Stanley. OK, Kevin Stanley and Cliff Dunn. So thank you for that. Um, I know there's been some confusion over the video. Um, so the official live stream um, actually is, I believe, now available for replay on the member portal. Um, we, were all, we were always planning on having the recordings and then uploading them later. I was unclear that there was another option of replaying it on the portal. Um, and so we didn't request that thing, but I believe that thing is now available as well as we will still have the recordings for available upload. So I know there's been some concern there. Um, I think those are most of my opening announcements. Um, I'm going to, so we're going to jump into uh, the results of some of the, the committee on investigation and then also who I appointed to the F13 committee. Um, first, I'm going to recognize Don Pomerantz for a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, I ask unanimous consent that upon final adjournment, this meeting be adjourned in memory of Deb Gust. Okay. I'm going to take that as unanimous consent of the body, and we will do so, and you all will yell at me if I forget. Um, I'm also going to ask unanimous consent of the body to, in the um, committees that have already been formed this year, as well as any more committees that we might form, um, as well as any standing committees, I'm going to ask unanimous consent of the body to, in the instructions that those committees have, add encouragement that they be restrained in the number of motions that they submit to Seattle. <laughs> Is there any objection? Okay, hearing none, we will make sure to pass that along to the committees. Um, Speaking of committees for the Hugo Award Study Committee and the Business Meeting Committee, please email your interest in those to business meeting at by 5 p.m. BST on Friday, so that's the end of this week. We will pass your interest along to the chairs of those committees and we will acknowledge your email and receipt. We have received many emails about those in the last couple days. I know you haven't received a reply yet because we're in the middle of everything else, but we will be replying to those and forwarding your information along to the chairs. Okay. So, oh, sorry, I'm getting things. Okay, so we're going to now turn to the results of the Committee on Investigation election. Um, so, Warren Buck was elected first, and so we'll function as the chairperson of that committee until and unless the committee decides to elect its own officers. And then Chris Barkley, Todd Dashoff, Chris Garcia, Vera Mendelson, Randall Shepard, and Nicholas White are the remaining members of that committee. So those are the results of the Committee on Investigation. God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> I am going to ask the body um, if there is any objection to thanking the tellers and ordering this just 
<laughs> and the tellers are, have a list. Uh, Sharon Smartsby, Jill Eastlake, Jack Foy, and Alana Vincent, who spent like four hours counting y'all yesterday. Thank you so much to them. Um, and so you get sent to thank the tellers, and once Sharon has completed compiling the final report for the minutes, after she's finished, finished that destruction of the ballots, is there any objection? Hearing none, they are so thanked in order. Moving to the F13 committee or location, location, location. I've appointed Tammy Coxon as chairperson. And the other members of that committee will be Don Eastlake, Anne Marie Rudolph, Olaf Brockney, Ingvar Matson, Kevin Black, Alan Fleming, and one member from an affected country to be appointed later. I have received one person who I believe qualifies who has expressed interest. Um, I, anybody else who may be from an affected country, the same deadline of 5 p.m. BST on Friday, to business meeting at glasgow2024.org to express interest and consent to appointment to that committee, and then I will choose who that person will be, and that information will be entered into the minutes. Okay. I'm going to ask the consent of the body to have the first thing that we take up to be take up today to be F18 cleaning up the art categories because one of the proposers needs to go strike the art show. Is there any objection? Hearing none. F18. I am recommending a debate time of excuse me of six minutes for this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate is set at six minutes. Terry? Oh, it's on page 54. <sighs> Terry Ash, she, her. Um, I mean, you can read the discussion points on <coughs> the agenda, but the current state of the professional artist and fan artist categories currently uh, relegates most artists who sell their work to fan artists because the only people who qualify as professional artists are people who have been recognized by various book and magazine publishers and are on their covers or in their pages. Um, and this is not the state of science fiction and fantasy art today. Look at any convention art show. You have people who, this is their job. This is their livelihood. They are professional artists, and they deserve to be recognized in that category. And to that end, we have amend, worked to amend the Constitution such that anyone who sells their art is considered professional. We have also worked to ensure that you can be nominated in both categories in a given year should you produce both work that qualifies as professional and work that is donated to the fan community and thus qualifies as fan. The problem is that this is really a, an award referring to a portfolio of work in a given year, but we call it best artist. Uh, think of it as more of best novel, not best author. Okay. And I will note that it looks like our captions are active, so yay. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, or do you wish to speak against? I don't know what it is. I have a question. Where <coughs> is this scheme? Does Sarah feel it? Okay, that, that would be debate. I, so I if you, please I come to, no. The member needs to come to a microphone. This sounds like it will be a speech against, so I'm recognizing you for a speech against, and you can give your speech at the microphone. I will remind the body that just because debate can be formed in, can be stated as a question, does not make it a question. It is still, in that case, debate. Thank you. Uh, Joni Brill Dashoff, ask a board member. Still. <laughs> My serious question is, if Everyone who's earning money from sales is in the same pot. 
Are we seriously putting someone like Bob Eggleton up against Sarah Felix, or maybe I should put it the other way? Thank you. That was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is that better? Okay, sorry, I think I'm too short, too tall for this mic and too short for that one. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, while I understand that there are many fine artists who have been qualifying for many years under the current system, I think that it is time that we acknowledge that there is more to professional art than book and magazine covers. There's 3D art, there's multimedia art, there's digital art, there's so much art, and we need to start taking those people seriously. We can't just say, oh, well, you're just a fan because you don't get on a book cover. We need to take ourselves and the state of the market more seriously than we do right now. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Yeah, let's, let's please not mess with the tech. Okay, I'm going to recognize the black. Andrew Adams, he, him. Mr. Chairperson, this is a thorny issue and I applaud the proposed motion for trying to fix this, which we have, we've been dealing, trying to deal with this for many years. Unfortunately, I still don't think you've got it quite right. There are too many fan artists I know who make some proceeds from the sale of their fan art after, for example, it's published in a convention <laughs> publication which they don't make a profit, they barely cover their costs if that, it just defrays some of those costs of being a fan artist, and so I'm sorry I cannot support this particular version of this proposal. I encourage the, the makers to consider those edge cases a bit more and try and get something we can live with. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there... Okay, that's not a privileged motion. Um, you can rise on either side to make that. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Um, anymore? Or person in the brown? I, no, I'm not going to get this right by the end. I'm going to keep trying though. Thank you very much. I'm supposed to take the, the, the introduction of the amendment or the proposed amendment. A person, uh, we are, this is not a category for a person, this is a category for a body work. A person produces both paid for art and not paid for art. The body work that, is not, that, that has been paid for goes on the professional, the body of work that has not been paid for goes on the band, and a person can be nominated for both. Good thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, I'm going to recognize in the stripes. I will remind the body that if you are not able to stand and be recognized, that's fine, but please get a speaking card from the floor manager, including if you are the floor manager, to assist me in recognizing you. Here we go. Todd uh, Most of what Andrew said covers my point, but just to make it a little clearer, I believe the motion as it's currently proposed says offered for sale. So you could offer something for sale every day of the year. If you never sell anything, are you a professional artist? Related to that, if I get a, I don't have a dog, but say I did. If I get a dog to walk across a canvas with paint on this place and put it up for sale, quote unquote, that's professional artwork. Okay, that was the speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I'm gonna, in the brown, in the back. And I will once again, does the floor manager have extra speaking cards available? Did you, do you know where they went? Okay, it is very difficult for me to see just a hand being raised. It is much more helpful if there's a colored piece of paper. Uh, next chairperson, Rafe Richards, he, him. Referring to an earlier speaker, perhaps this does not get it exactly right. It is closer to right than what we currently have. 
we've been trying to get it exactly right for as long as I've been coming to business meetings, and that's not very long to bear some people here, but it's still quite a while. We cannot continue to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. We should get better. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, um, at the front. John Pomeranz, speak him. I speak reluctantly against because I agree uh, with the previous speaker. I think this is something that needs fixing and I applaud the makers for doing so. And furthermore, I feel somewhat at sea because I've not been part of all of the previous debate on this. But I am concerned, merely reading this now, that they are not limiting the nominated works in either category to works that have anything to do with our genre. Um, and furthermore, that the phrase body of work is perhaps too broad, since it might include a series of novels, or short stories, or uh, con running, or something else. Uh, and I appreciate that what they're trying to accomplish is more than two-dimensional visual art, and I think that is laudable. But I am, I, I would like to be told that I am wrong, and switch to supporting this, but at this time I cannot. Okay, that was a speech against, and time in favor is lost. Okay, I'm gonna say we have less than 10 seconds remaining, that's time being elapsed, unless I hear an objection. Next, next chair, uh, Tammy wishes to propose a motion to the absence, like Wait. one second. Okay, so you're wanting to make just a, not, a non-privileged motion? Yeah. Okay. No, and that's fair, and that is a reason why I shouldn't just consider 10 seconds as being elapsed. So I'm going to take that as an objection, not consider it, and ask if there's anybody wishing to speak in favor. And I will recognize the purple at the back. Move to amend? Yep, that's in order. Uh, move to amend to add the words. Um, to make the first sentence read, one or more collaborators on a body of work, of a body of artwork in the field of science fiction or fantasy. Second. 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 In the second section would also uh, yeah. say that for any place body of work appears, it would be on a body of artwork in the field of science fiction or fantasy. Okay, so the um, motion to amend, it's been moved and seconded, this would, once again, people in the front, I need you to, if you're going to talk, do it at a volume that I can't hear you. Um, for both instances, somebody tell me if there's more than two. Hearing none, it's both instances of work, a body of work, strike work, and insert artwork in the field of science fiction and fantasy, so that in both instances it would read, one or more collaborators on a body of artwork in the field of science fiction and fantasy. <coughs> or, 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 or,
That was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? In the blue. Jill Eastlake, mixed chair person. Uh, I make tote bags. If they happen to have uh, pictures of spaceships on them, and I charge $40 for it, yeah. and I put it in an art show, that makes me a professional artist. Yeah. Yeah. This, this just doesn't make sense, sense to me. And if enough, that was a speech against. The member in the order in the back is out of order. The entire body is out of order for choosing to have like participatory debate. <laughs> okay. Okay. Time for debate has elapsed. So we are going to move to a vote. Okay. All those in favor of F18 as amended, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Okay, and the motion passes. <laughs> Apologies to the, those in favor. Carlo had to keep their arms up. I thought it was going to be closer. Um, okay, having dealt with F18, we are now going to move back to F10. So, previously on the business meeting, for those that do not remember, we divided F10 into several different sections. And the piece that is still with us is F10A, which is the new section 1.9.1, well, 1.9, rather. And the 4615, I believe. Okay, so it's, so looking in the agenda, it's on the first page, and then all the way to Article 2 on the second page. And then, at the very end, that last paragraph there. So it's everything related to the software committee. Okay? So that is F10A, and that is what is before us. Okay. For F10A, I'm going to recommend a total debate time of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, I'm sorry, was that an objection? Okay, hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the back, one of the proposers of the motion. Shepard, he um, makes chairperson. I have an amendment that I would like to propose. That, oh, it's on there. <laughs> yes. Uh, it chunks all the clunky stuff from the original motion, but settles into requiring open source software. We should have never had once private software that nobody could examine, let alone four times, let alone last year. So I think open source software covers the transparency that's needed as part of the Hugo process. Others should be able to look at it and determine how functional it is. And I, Chris Rose drafted that language. I'm very much in favor of it. I think it cuts straight and simple. It doesn't really place any undue burden on the convention. They're allowed to pick the open source software they want. Okay, the parliamentarian is working to split this into two slides so that the font can be bigger. So the motion by substitution has been moved, and I think I heard a second. Okay, good. We've heard a second. Great. That was a speech in favor. So the total of four minutes of debate time is going to be split between the two sides of the amendment to start with. Is there anyone wishing to speak? You know what? I'm going to give you all a little bit of time first to read it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give myself a little bit of time to read it. <coughs> So 
So this amendment by substitution would add two new sections. So for everyone's edification, 3.7 is the nomination section of the Hugo article in the Constitution. And so this would add this new 374 to the nomination section. And then 311 is the voting section of the Hugo article. And so this would be a new subpoint in section 311 that it would add. Yes. Mr. Chair, I would like a ruling on whether or not this amendment can be considered to be germane to the original amendment, given that it both does a different thing and alters a different section of the Constitution. This would seem to be substituting a completely new piece of business for the other piece of business, because it does something so completely different. is well taken. First of all, I'm going to ask unanimous consent of the body to treat this as an amendment to the to F10A anyways. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the rules are suspended to allow this as amendment by substitution to F10A. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? F10A has been amended by, well, what is before us is an amendment by substitution to F10A, which is now looking at adding sections to 3.7 and 3.11. So the original sections as listed in your agenda are not part of the amendment by substitution, and so are not what we are looking at right now. We are looking at the new text in the substitution. Thank you. It is on the screen. It has not been printed because of time. Okay. Harry and Lurie Sheeher. While I appreciate having open source software as a requirement, that doesn't solve all of the problems. First of all, this only applies to the Hugo software and not to the site selection software. And second, just because something is open source doesn't mean it's good. And, without, and, and not every Worldcon may have the same level of technical expertise to determine what is good, and therefore having a software advisory committee might still be a good idea. That was a speech against the amendment by substitution. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the back. Chris Rose, he, him, uh, the author of the amendment in question. Uh, I, without getting into the merits of the, of the amendment itself, uh, but just by substitution, I think that this addresses the narrower set of things that the business meeting can reasonably be expected to mandate about how uh, Worldcon operates. It's the Hugos and the things that we hand on to them. And so I want the narrower amendment that gives us the best we can out of what is reasonable to ask. Hey, okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Okay, in the gray. Jack Boy, he, him. Uh, Mr. Herson, I, uh, I, I support the gist of this amendment. Uh, my concern is just that the limitation to custom software uh, might open the door for bringing in commercial packages uh, if, if it was claimed to be off the shelf. Okay, that was the speech against. How much time remains on each side? Uh, we have one minute and nine seconds remaining, four and 55 seconds remaining against. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in? Yes, state your question. Kevin Stanley, he and Parliamentary Inquiry. Mr. Chairperson, should this amendment by substitution fail, would it be in order, since we would be back at the original wording that's in the printed document, to add that same wording that is up before us as the amendment by substitution as an addition 
to the proposal to create the open source software committee? Would it be in order to do so at that time? So for those not familiar, there are rules in our parliamentary authority about not rehashing things over and over, essentially. However, substituting the text to completely swap it is a different thing than adding the text in addition to what we have. So I think I would rule that to be in order. Would that, would that happen? Okay. I'd, what, I'd ask for a speech in favor, right? Okay, is there anyone who to speak in favor? Okay, in the front. Or, I'm sorry, at the side. Yeah. I do, a, like, thank you all for not yelling look to the left at me like you did at Jared, <laughs> but sometimes I do need a reminder that there's somebody in the corner over there. My apologies. Ron Oates, he, him, I am. Like Chris, I have also written Hugo Awards soft, accounting software, and my software will be open source by the end of the month. I fully support this. I do not support the idea of a committee, at least not as written. It is not the purview of the a business meeting, and I fear severely that people who are not competent to be specifying or worse, creating software will be elected to said committee and will create a horrible, horrible mess that will not be useful software because we will have too many cooks in the kitchen instead of one or two people who understand Ten software. Seconds. So please approve this amendment. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, at the front. Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and I have been on Hugo administration subcommittees multiple times. Uh, it is very difficult to find software that is reasonably expected to be correct, I hate to say provably correct, that doesn't work. Um, and also suitable for the Hugo administrator to actually understand and use. We've had multiple times where software was delivered and turned out during the counting processes to be ineffective, incomplete, or un ununderstandable, poorly documented. I can go through the whole litany of things that go wrong with software, and you can't stop in the middle of counting to go back to the open source process and, 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 and get it fixed. So I urge us not to <coughs> require this uh, because the administrators need more leeway. Okay. Time for debate on the amendment has elapsed. Is there anyone who wishes Yes, you may offer an amendment. That would be in order. It will not be debatable. Thank you. Perry and Larissa, you heard, can we get to the second part? That's No, yes, yes. I, I move to strike the words for the Hugo Awards from this part. Okay, so I heard the amendment. I am going to say you can strike for the Hugo Awards from it, but it is still going to be in Article 3 about and 3.11 about voting for the Hugo Awards. So instead of that, can we put it in the section for the voting for the site selection and just... So you are wanting to... Hold on. I will remind the body that whether or not they like the idea of the, amend the amendment um, sounds talking about that would not be relevant. I, I agree, but I'm still going to state what she's trying to do first. So you are wanting to add somewhere in Article 4, basically duplicating this text, right, so probably tallying. Yes. Okay. Yes. I will rule that that amendment is not germane because this is about the <laughs> this amendment is about Hugo Award voting software. Um, if somebody wishes to make an amendment to do that, or sorry, a new motion to do that at a later time, you would. 
need to figure out where in Article 4 you were wanting to do that. Okay, I see that multiple people are, are we all rising for privilege motions? Yes? Okay. I'm glad I'm see him. I wish to appeal the ruling of the chair. I'm sorry for the body for doing this. The original motion was more broadly than just the Hugo um, voting. It was about software using both Hugo voting and site selection. And therefore, as we have allowed this, I believe it is still Jimmy. Okay. The ruling has been appealed. Um, so for our standing rules, there's some amount of time allotted to this. Um, one moment, or maybe there's not, maybe it's not debatable. Okay, time for debate has expired, um, so there is not technically time to debate. Um, I get to state my reasoning, I'm going to do so very briefly. The member has already stated theirs. Does the member wish to elaborate at all on this time? <coughs> okay, um, so the way an appeal works is that I will get to state my reasoning for it. You already heard the member's reasoning for disagreeing with me. We will then move to a vote. The vote is in the form of, do you vote to sustain the ruling of the chair? So a yes vote will be to agree with me and, cons and call the amendment out of order for not being germane. A no vote will be to disagree with me and to flip, and so then the amendment would be in order and be considered germane. So my reasoning is that regardless of what the original motion was about, the amendment by substitution is only about the Hugo Award voting software. And so what is before us is the amendment by substitution, which is just about Hugo voting. The contents of the original motion don't matter. Um, and so also adding site selection into this would not be germane. That's going to be the extent of my speech. The member has foregone um, adding to their rationale. So I will also forego my prerogative to say a second thing at the end of debate. That seems unnecessary. Okay, so as I said, the motion will be in the form of, do you vote to sustain the ruling of the chair? A yes vote is to agree with me, a no vote is to disagree with me. Okay, all those in favor, and this requires a majority vote. All those in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair, raise the hand, thank you. All those against, thank you and the chair's ruling is sustained, and the amendment is not considered to be germane. Time for debate on the motion, or on the amendment by substitution, has elapsed, and so we will move to a vote. For what purposes the member is? Okay, come to the microphone. Yes. Because the, yes. Well, okay, yes, they are second in our order amendments, but per our rules, when the first order amendment is an amendment by substitution, second order amendments are allowed. Christina Forsyth, she, her. Could we strike the word custom so this amendment applies to off the shelf software? Okay, so the motion is to strike the word custom. Is there a second? Hearing none. There is no second, and so the amendment is not before us. Okay. Time for debate has elapsed. For what purpose does the member raise the card? Uh, I wish to amend to... Okay, bring the mic to the member, please. I wish to amend by adding the following after the words Hugo Awards. Site selection or any other polling conducted by the World Con Committee. I'm going to rule that that is not germane because we cannot add things about how to run site selection into the article about how to run the Hugo Awards. Okay. For what purpose does the member rise? Call the question. Okay. Call the question on what? On the pending matter. On only the pending matter. Okay. The question has been called on the pending matter, which is the amendment by substitution. Is there anyone still wishing to speak for any purpose? Okay, seeing one, we will move to a vote on calling the question, which requires a two-thirds <coughs> vote. Calling the question ends the debate and also ends the making of any subsidiary motions like further amendments. Order. Yes. I thought there was an appeal in process. We already voted on the appeal. We handled that. The, the decision of the chair was sustained. Okay. 
So the question has been called. All those in favor of ending debate, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, thank you. The motion passes and the debate is ended and we are going to move to a vote on the amendment by substitution to F10A, which is on the screen. It is in two slides. All those in favor of the amendment by substitution, please raise the hand. We are voting on whether or not the amendment by substitution will become the thing that is then before us. So this is not final adoption or pre-final adoption or whatever you want to call it when we still got to send it to Seattle. This is purely on whether or not we want to take the text of the amendment by substitution and have that be the text before us. All those in favor of the amendment by substitution, raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed, thank you. The motion passes, and so what before us, what is before us is now F10A as amended, which is the text on the screen. We have not had substantive debate on F10A. However, since we have had substantive debate, on the amendment by substitution, which is now what is before us. I'm going to rule that we have had substantive debate on F10A, unless somebody objects. Is there any objection? State your inquiry at the microphone. Alexis Layton, he, him. Is it in order now to move to amend by adding in some of the clause about site selection? No, it, it it is the same text. It was not germane before, and so it is not germane now. Unless the member wishes to suspend the rules. I mean, I would because the original motion included, included uh, Please speak in. I know you're addressing me, but I need you to speak with the microphone. The original motion covered site selection. Right, I understand that. However. The original motion is like it never existed at this point. What is before us is the text that we voted to substitute with, which does not relate to site selection. And so adding in an amendment related to site selection would not be germane. I understand that the member disagrees with me. Does the member wish to suspend the rules or appeal the ruling of the chair? Otherwise, we'll need to ask the member to sit down. OK. OK. I'm going to ask some questions. What purpose? Okay. And right. What is your purpose for rising? Okay. The secretary is trying to figure out some tech stuff. I will once again remind the body that we are we have an emergency holographic secretary who did not bring tech like they are going to need to be taking notes, and so we appreciate your grace for dealing with tech that isn't hers. We're good. Okay, I'm going to recognize in the green at the front. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Next chair, I think possibly <coughs> we have a possible way to get to what I think a bunch of people are trying to do. Next chair, I move to amend the, set, the one that's above us to move it from an amendment in uh, section three or uh, article three to move the whole thing to Article or Six Constitution, which has the general provisions about voting everywhere, and to general life, so it would probably to add it somewhere in Section Six. And I'd leave it to the Secretary where probably six four after round six four, and to generalize the wording to take out the actual the, the, the reference to the Hugo Award, so it would apply to all the elections that we administer if we use custom software, that it be open source. This would, in effect, apply to the Hugo Award and site selection as it's not likely we would need it for the Elections to Mark Protection Committee. Okay. So I'm moving to generalize this wording and move it to, sec to ar sec Article 6, and that is my motion. And then one second. Second. Okay, I hear the second. And I gave him a speech in favor of it. So here's what I'm gonna say. You're asking the secretary to do a lot, so I'm going to ask the body, is there any objection? We are at 1049. Is there any objection to going ahead and taking our bio break now so that the member can create actual wording for us to put on the screen when we return from our bio break? Hearing none, or is that an objection? 
Okay, so, I mean, technically this isn't a suspension of the rules, it's just I wish to move to refer to committee. You wish to move to refer to committee? Okay. I'm going to hear that motion. The amendment was seconded, so what's before us is the amendment that isn't in text form yet, and now we have a motion to refer. I'd like to, re uh, Tammy Paxson, she, her, I'd like to refer this to committee. Uh, the consequences of open source software in the context of site selection are very different than in the context of Hugo administration, uh, where we have a, in the Hugo administration, we... So this is a speech, oh, okay. and time for debate yeah. has elapsed. Excellent. I'm going to ask you, A, to what committee, and B, to report back when? To a committee to be created by the chair. Okay. Um, and uh, to report back by Seattle, because we don't have any more time in this uh, meeting. Today. Okay. So the motion is to refer to a chair appointed, a chair, refer to a committee appointed by me, the chair, to report back to Seattle. Is there a second? Second. Okay, time for debate has elapsed. For what purpose does the member rise? Uh, parliamentary inquiry for inquiry, I guess. Okay. Uh, are we referring? Uh, okay, so the question is what's being referred? Yes. So everything, when we refer an amendment to committee, it also refers the underlying matter. Okay. So the motion is to refer the amendment to F10A as amended, and therefore also F10A as amended to committee, appointed by me to report back to Seattle. There's been a second. Time for debate has elapsed. For what purpose does the member rise? To move to amend. To move to amend the referral to committee. That is in order. Please state your amendment. Mr. Chair, I move to only refer the Stanley Amendment to the committee. I that is not in order. That's not how it works. Okay. Um, time for debate has elapsed. The item before us is the motion to refer the amendment and the underlying matter to committee to be appointed by me to report to Seattle. Are we ready to vote? Okay. All those in favor of referral, raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, I'm going to say that the no's have it. So what is before us is the amendment from Mr. Stanley. I'm going to say that it is 10.52. We are going to be in recess until 11.02, at which time the maker of the motion will have text, as well as where they want to put the text for the body to see. We are in recess for 10 minutes. I need to ask all conversations to cease and all members to take their seats. Good job on the conversations, but please take your seats. Okay. So, the item before us is the amendment from Kevin Stanley, which was seconded, which is on the screen. So this would move the second portion of, the, of what is now F10A to section 6.4 of the Constitution, where it says 6.4, that should also be underlined in blue, because we moved it, and strike the words of the Hugo Award and insert any matter under this constitution so that it reads all custom software, dot, 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 uh, for any matter under this constitution must be licensed, etc. That has been moved and seconded. Is there any objection to extending debate time by one minute on each side? Hearing none, debate time is extended. I'm going to recognize the person in the front for a motion. Linda Robinette, she, her, mixed chairperson. I move to reconsider the referral to the committee I had previously voted against. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded to reconsider the referral to committee. We have extended debate time by one minute on each side. So is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the reconsideration, which can go into the merits of the underlying matter? The underlying matter is the referral. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Next chair, I thoroughly acknowledge that this is potentially much more complicated than we thought, and I think it would be a good idea now to go ahead and send this off to a committee and make it <laughs> think about what we're doing and make sure we accomplish it in the correct way. Thank you. That is a speech in favor. 
Is there anyone wishing to speak against the reconsideration? Okay, in the back. The, the item before us is the reconsideration. Debate on the reconsideration can go into the underlying matter, which is the referral. So if you have feelings against referring, that would be in order for you to speak against. Do you wish to do so? Yes, I'm, uh, okay. I'm speaking against referring to Okay, that is in order as part of the, as part of speaking against the reconsideration. Uh, Bill Rowe, uh, member here, also member of the Apache Software Foundation. Um, I don't see anything in this amendment uh, that overly complicates the matter, and I don't believe that uh, uh, we need to postpone at this time uh, what is a very straightforward question, uh, and having already consulted uh, a few people here, uh, I believe that uh, we are ready to vote on the matter and not take up any more of this committee's time, or the member's time. Okay, that was a speech against the reconsideration. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, when we get to a vote, we are voting on whether we should vote again about the referred committee, right? Correct. Thank you. One would presume that if the reconsideration passes, the referral might, but who knows what would happen? <laughs> okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of reconsideration? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Up at the front. Mixed chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. If you think the question of going to the Hugos needs to go to committee, let that go to committee. We'll let uh, Mr. Stanley, uh, or sorry, my, the other member, uh, put something together on their own. But I think the underlying question is already pretty clean and straightforward. It's only gotten complicated since the Hugos got dragged in. That was a speech against reconsideration. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Again? One moment. Warren Buff, he, him. In the interest of making sure the body understands how complicated this is and why we must refer to the committee, the text proposed now reaches the business meeting, site selection, and the Hugos. And the consequences really do need to be studied before we vote on that. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor of reconsideration. How much time do we have remaining? Uh, we have 29 seconds remaining for and 17 seconds remaining against. Okay. Is there any wishing to speak against reconsideration? Okay, in the blue. Joshua Krungel, to him. If we think this is too complicated, we should defeat the amendments and just pass the underlying motion. That was a speech against referral, or reconsideration, and also referral. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor of reconsideration? Anybody wishing to speak against? Okay, we're going to move to a vote. For what member does the, or for what purpose? Against. You wish to speak against? Yes. Okay. We have 12 seconds remaining against.
This does not require that the humans at business meeting and site selection must use the same software. It just that they have to, we have to look into other software. <coughs> okay, that was a speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor of reconsideration? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move to a vote. So to be clear, what we are voting on is whether or not we wish to reconsider the vote to refer to committee. This is not whether or not we wish to re refer to committee. It is purely whether we wish to reconsider that vote. It does require a majority. All those in favor of reconsideration, raise the hand. Thank you. Thank you. All those against? Okay, and re reconsideration uh, passes. Debate time has elapsed. The matter before us is now referral to committee. I think we're gonna serpentine, but we're just gonna see if we flip a lot of people, just in case, because that would be faster. Um, to be very clear, this is not me saying do or don't vote a certain way. I just, we're gonna see if a count of a hand vote is enough to see what it is before we move to a serpentine if that's required. All those in favor of referral to a committee, referral of the Stanley Amendment and the underlying matter to a committee to be appointed by me to be to report back to Seattle, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, and the ayes have it, and the motion is, and the entire matter is referred to a committee. I'm going to appoint a committee chaired by Chris and the other members of it to be picked by Chris. Cool. Okay. So the F.10A committee will be chaired by Chris Rose with other members to be appointed by Chris Rose. Okay. We are going to move on to item F11. Hugo Administration and Site Selection Monitoring, which is found on page 43 of your agenda. Just so that we're all clear, there was discussion about dividing this question back on Saturday during the first pass, but it was not divided. So what is before us is what's in your agenda. I'm going to recommend a debate time of Four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Does somebody from the Mark Protection Committee wish to speak in favor? Not only is that key, there are a number of proposals for, for sort of radical change, like having a central list list directly administering or site selection or things like that, but those are sort of difficult and complicated things to do. This is uh, a amendment to the Constitution which would provide for uh, monitoring by representatives of the business meeting of the process of uh, site selection administration and Hugo uh, <coughs> administration, and uh, with reports back to the business meeting and the Market Protection Committee to gain uh, greater insight and to uh, perhaps spot uh, problems earlier. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. I want to be really clear to the body. The faces you just saw me making were entirely about me finding out that apparently I'm spending tomorrow night in Philadelphia, according to American Airlines. It's not about the speeches. I try not to make faces. I just want to be very clear. It was not about anything that was happening here. We're going to take that up not during the meeting. Okay. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? At the front. Next chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and uh, I have been on Hugo administration subcommittees. The questions and the kind of things that come up, some of which should be remain, remain confidential and not shared with other people, uh, because they are potentially embarrassing, including some of the stupid things you know people do. Um, and some of them which come up and, and are gone, you make the decision uh, in the, in the last days before the ballot is published or in the last days before the counting is closed, uh, or even sometimes afterwards when you're trying to figure out who's voting for what. Um, 
I don't think that you can effectively monitor uh, a Hugo administration subcommittee and retain the delegation uh, of its independence. It is either uh, going to be independent and it's going to make its own decisions, or it's going to be very transparent and frankly everybody's going to be, end up being as unhappy as they are now. So I don't see that, that this improves anything. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Um, the front and the black. I'm Radha Mateen Mr. Chairperson. The specific duties of the people appointed to do this monitoring are to report on the propriety of the process, by the propriety of the process. That is all they are expected to report on, not the nitty gritty, not anything embarrassing, unless that embarrassment is an attempt to interfere unduly with the process as we've laid out. I support this motion. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? The front. Did see question her mixture at this time would it be appropriate to move to refer this to the Hugo Process Study Committee? Or did we try that already or not? I believe we, we tried that and it was determined by the body that since it wasn't to right. me, but y'all voted that because it also dealt with site selection, you didn't want to refer it to that committee. Huh. Okay. So that would not be in order as we've already tried to do that. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against at the back? Ms. Rose Keehan, uh, I guess it's probably where I sit on this, but I'm not 100% sure. I guess I would just question whether this oversight committee is intended to follow every email and private communication between the members of the Hugo subcommittee, regardless of what convention they are associated with, including the conventions that might have to deal with the public relations blog. I am concerned that that is an unacceptable burden to place on the communications of, of the Hugo subcommittee and on the potential observers for it. That was a speech against. Is there anyone who should speak in favor? At the front, or the front side. Mr. Chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, to address the comments of a prior member, I think we are at a point where we may have, we actually have to trade some independence for some oversight given what happened last year. Um, look, there's always the problem of who watches the watchmen. We're going to have to figure out just exactly how closely they follow things, but at the very least, decisions like you know potentially kicking works off the ballot for unknown reasons needs to be subject to some sort of oversight and interrogation, or we end up where we are right now. Okay, that was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to, or how much time do we have? We have 27 seconds remaining in favor and 30 against. Okay, is the regular machine to speak against? Um, in the scarf. Yep. That's the front face. We are reacting to something that happened less than a year ago. I think that we should give some time and see if that doesn't happen again, because I do not believe it's going to happen again. That was Ellen Kovar. Um, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor in the tartan scarfy thing? Sash. Sash, thank you. Look, I don't know what it is at this point. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairperson, Kevin Hewitt, he, him. I, I was in a parliamentary inquiry. Is it appropriate at this time to recommend postponing this item indefinitely? 
No, it would not be in order to postpone indefinitely for our rules. That's only in order at the preliminary meeting or the first time that it comes up at a main basis meeting, which mm -hmm. already has. Thank you. Okay. I believe I was looking for a speech in favor. Okay. At the front in the blue. Marie Schieffer, yes, we're reacting to what happened last year. We're trying to prevent it from happening ever again. Uh, we're putting two new people on each of the uh, committees, which is not a great burden on the current committee. Where are we on time? We have eight more meeting again, 17 four. Okay. Is there a new machine to speak against? Over on the side, microphone. Floor manager. Well, I'm not sure about the whole amendment, but I, I, I specifically, excuse me, I specifically wish to make an amendment. Uh, I Please wish, state your name. Uh, sorry, Lou Walkoff, he, him. State your uh, amendment. To remove all, the reference to the Mark Protection Committee. Frankly, I don't see that it's within their purview. In the last paragraph? where it says these persons shall report to the business meeting and to the Mark Protection Committee? Yeah, that seems to be the only place where it appears, yes. Um, are you also wishing to strike the part at the last sentence that the vacancy can be filled temporarily by the Mark Protection Committee? I don't think that's what you're trying to do. Because somebody needs to fill the um, vacancy. Yes, I believe I am. So you're but wanting as, to... as I said, I don't believe that it falls within okay, the... Okay, I, I, that's debate. I need to clarify what the amendment is first. So you are wanting to move to strike in the final paragraph, in the first sentence, the words, and to the Merck Protection Committee, as well as in the final sentence of the last paragraph, strike the words, and until the business meeting so acts temporarily filled by the Mark Protection Committee. Is that correct? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. The motion has been moved and seconded. We have about 30 seconds of time remaining. Okay. So this will be split 15 seconds on each side. So you will get to speak to it, but it will need to be 15 seconds or less. Once the secretary, I know, once the secretary has caught up, And I have the text on the screen in just a moment. Text on the screen in just a moment. We have the text in the slides, Linda, so. Can you? Okay. Do you wish to speak to it? Yes. You have 15 seconds. This is the equivalent of putting the lawyers in charge of protecting Tony the Tiger for Kellogg uh, on the safety inspections committee uh, and to de and deal with the uh, uh, supply chain air problems that they have. It's not within the permit. Time. Okay. That was a speech in favor. I see lots of people hopping up. Are you wishing to make privileged motions? In which case, you need to wait for me to ask, is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? <laughs> so anybody with D20? <laughs> yeah, Don is the maker of the underlying motions. I'm gonna recognize him. Oh, one of the makers. No, it's like you know, I, I don't see this as putting the Mark Protection Committee or in charge, particularly of anything they aren't already uh, in charge of. Uh, it seems to me that in case there's any need to act between business meetings, that it's useful for the Mark Protection Committee to receive reports. Time. Time is elapsed. To be fair, I think it was the tech person that cut your mic, not the timekeeper. Um, 
Can the tech person turn the mic on to allow the, the speaker to finish their sentence? And somebody should be able to fill vacancies. Yes. Thank you. Okay, time for debate has elapsed, so we will move to a vote. What we are voting on is the amendment to strike in the last paragraph, in the first sentence, the words, and to the Mark Protection Committee, so that it would read, these persons shall report to the business meeting as to the propriety, etc. And in the last sentence, the striking, and until the business meeting acts, or and until the business meeting so acts <coughs> to the end, so that it would read, should a vacancy occur in the set of four persons, the remainder of their term may be filled by the business meeting. That is the amendment. Are we clear on what the amendment is? All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, the amendment does not pass. And so we are back to F.11 as proposed. Time for debate has elapsed, and so we will move to a vote. For what purpose does the member rise? Point of parliamentary inquiry. Okay. Would it be in order to move for division? Uh, division of a question, not the house, I'm assuming. Uh, yes, division. Okay, it would be in order to divide if you divide it in a way that I rule is Thank dividable. You. I move to divide the question. Can you I, please I have, come to the mic? I apologize. Yeah. We did already try to divide this, I believe, so you can't try to divide it the way we've already tried to divide it. I may have missed one. I'm going to move to divide the question to separate between the Hebrew administration monitoring and site selection monitoring. Yeah. I have paragraph notes, specifically which paragraphs need to be in which and both. I'm happy to provide those to the table or just to recite them up here. <coughs> Is that in I, order? I think, at first I thought you were trying to divide it the same way, but then you said you had paragraph notes about which need to be in the same and both, and I don't remember that being a thing in the previous division. It was not. So I think it probably would be in order. But my guess, let me see what you have so I can decide if it's intertangled. One moment, we're going to be at a brief standy pause while we look at this. It was a valiant effort, but I'm ruling that the division is intertangled. But yeah, the secretary does still need to see what you wanted to do, probably, so that the minutes know what I ruled wasn't allowed. Um, I think, well, hold on, hold on. I will say, because I ruled that it's not allowed and the member doesn't seem to be trying to appeal me, we can get that added to the minutes later because there's not going to be anything further on it. Okay. So what is before us is F.11 as proposed. Time for debate has elapsed, and so we will move to a vote. Yeah, we only, when the text is amended, we have it for the screen. We do not have the full text of the original things in the agenda on the screen because we have the agenda printed for you. For what purposes the member rise? Okay, the question has been called and seconded. Is there anyone wishing to speak on this matter for any purpose? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of F.11, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and F.11 passes and will be forwarded on to Seattle for ratification. F.12 has already been defeated, F.13 has been referred, and so this brings us to F.14, popular ratification. Yes, what state you're inquiring? One moment. Is my microphone? Sorry, Carrie Ann Murray, she heard. Would this be the time to try to refer this to committee? It would be once I've set a debate time and 
we've actually gotten to it. Okay. For FTOP 14, popular ratification, I am recommending a debate time of eight minutes. Is there any objection to eight minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set to eight minutes. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak in favor? Next, uh, Kevin Stanley, he him. Next chairperson, I do think I am in getting some karmic payback for comments that I have made before this body and elsewhere. Far back in the mists of time before recorded history, also known as 1993, <coughs> it is, seems to be an article of faith among people who have only just recently discovered that a world con exists or how it is governed, that anything that happened before then, and particularly anything 50 years ago, was basically just two people meeting in their parents' basement. Well, that's not true. And some of you know that. And some of you, not just those who were there, know the history of our organization. We have been known to change our rules on how we vote on things. Back before the 1970s, you had to be in this room at the site selection session to vote <coughs> on where to choose a site. And you had to be there at the beginning of the meeting where the doors were closed and no one else was admitted while you had to sit through the speeches. And there were people who desperately defended that, people of some renown in our field at the time. I've read the, I've read the discussions. And yet, in the early 70s, we, the business meeting, voted away our own ability, our preciously held vote, to be able to control this, to allow all the members to participate, not all at once, not in some mass meeting, but in a way that allowed them to vote by ballot. And the world did not end. And in fact, I would contend that the selection process got much better. I am not in favor of gigantic in, uh, Zoom calls of all of our members, but that is beyond the scope of this. I do, however, think that it would be fair to allow all of our members supporting and uh, any WSPIS member of any class who has WSPIS rights to have a voice in the ratification of, docu of, our, of the changes to our fundamental governing document. Similarly to how many states, I know not all countries apply this way, we, change, we, we in those states have to vote on changes to our state's constitutions. The, in most but not all cases, or in many cases, those changes have to come out of the legislature, and many of them do. But the citizens of the state vote. We don't require the citizens of the state to participate in a 10,000 person Zoom call. Just all I'm asking here, all this is proposing is that we make the ratification stage open to everybody and that we do it by ballot. And the mechanism that is chosen in here is one that already exists for site selection other than you don't have to pay to do it other than to become a member. You don't have to pay the additional money. We know how to administer that. And I think we should adopt this and just let go, let it go. The members can choose whether or not to uh, adopt or ratify things. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I will recognize. Do you have a privilege to matter? Okay, then I will recognize the member in the blue. Is the mic on? Yep. Harry and Lurie she, her. I move to refer this to the Business Meeting Study Committee. Second. 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 It has been moved and seconded to refer this to the business meeting study group that was created on Friday or Saturday, uh, chaired by Colin and Farah. Uh, do you wish to speak to it? Sure. Um, I think this is one of the things that the business meeting study committee will be looking at, and it makes more sense to have them do it all at once. I will say I'm going to set a debate time of a total of two minutes for this referral to come out of the time remaining on the main matter. Is there any objection to two minutes? Okay, hearing none, debate time for the referral is set to two minutes. Is there anyone wishing to speak against referral? Also in the blue.
I urge this body to defeat this um, so that this um, can be amended to instead of being a popular ratification, um, instead of popular uh, poll um, over pending amendments, which I think would serve the purpose without making horrible, potentially horrible mistakes the body can't fix. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, Alan Flagman, he him. Um, uh, Mr. Chairperson, I speak to, uh, in favor of referring this to committee. One of the things that this um, uh, uh, World Court has done for the first time is to have an advisory vote on uh, independent films. Uh, it would be very useful for the uh, outcomes of the uh, the process of this to be input into a committee stage so that um, uh, the information from that can be taken to be applied to many things that would need to be done by popular ratification. We need to dot the I's and cross the T's on this. Committee is the best place to do that. How much time is remaining? Uh, we have 19 seconds remaining for and 43 seconds remaining against. Okay, is there a speech against referral? I'm gonna recognize the secretary. Yes, if you could please move to the mic and Warren will take notes. Linda Denarov, she, her. Um, when this was originally proposed several years ago, I voted against it. But given all the arguments that I've seen on the internet and elsewhere, I think this is a reasonable proposal that we should implement. Thank you. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Like, yes. That was a speech against referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, at the back. We have 19 seconds remaining in favor. Elspeth Kovar, she, her. This is long enough that we're going to debate it to death. And I'd kind of like to have home at some point. So why don't we just refer to the committee and we can deal with it quickly. Thank you. Okay, that is a speech in favor of referral. Is there anyone who should speak against? How much time is remaining? We have 30 seconds remaining against. But done, he, him. Either the committee will somehow lose track of this or will be dealing with this with no input from the body as such. And look, the independent <coughs> film Hugo was a steaming pile of incoherent nonsense and it got 42% of the vote. Yes, this is not germane. Um, make sure I. I we're asking people, you know, we're asking to go to a, to a vote of the, bo of the people. And that's what the vote of the people just did. We're going to ask for order in the body. I do agree with an edge case. I'm not, I'm not going to say that we still have more time. I'm going to say that that's time elapsed for speeches. Is that against or in favor? Oh, yeah, that is against. Okay. How much time is remaining for speeches in favor? Uh, we're out of time for this particular debate. We still have some time on the top level. Okay. Time for debate on the referral has elapsed, so we will move to a vote. So what is before us is referral of F14 to the business meeting study group that was created <laughs> earlier that is chaired by Colin and Farah. All those in favor of referral to the business meeting study group, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against. And the motion passes and it is referred to committee. Thank you. So F14 has been referred.
Okay, looking at where we are on time, I'm going to suggest that we take up next F17, editorial alignment. Is there any objection? Okay, you object to taking up editorial alignment next? Okay, are you wanting me to just go to meetings, meetings, or? Okay, I'm going to, um, is there a motion to suspend the rules to take up editorial alignment instead? So moved, okay, and I've heard multiple, so that was seconded as well. We'll move immediately to a vote. All those in favor of taking up editorial alignment next, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against. And that was two thirds, and so we'll move on to editorial alignment, which is F17 on page 54. <coughs> My apologies, I drank some water that went the wrong way, so that's why this is happening now. Um, okay, editorial alignment. Uh, I am recommending a debate time of four minutes on this. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Or is any, are any of the proposers in the room and wishing to speak to it? Hey, is there anybody else wishing to speak to this? Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of F-17 editorial alignment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Thank you. It was very enthusiastic. I wasn't sure if it meant something different. Uh, F-17 passes and will be passed on to Seattle. Okay. Well, I just gave us less time for meetings everywhere, but I don't know that any of the others are quick. So we're going to go ahead and spend our 15 minutes before lunch for half an hour. You're right. Look, I don't remember things at this point. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take up F15 now, which is on page 50. I am recommending a debate time of six minutes. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to postpone this indefinitely. Debate time is automatically set at four minutes. Um, do you wish to speak to the motion? Okay. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? Is there anybody who wishes to speak against postponing indefinitely? I recognize the maker of the motion. <coughs> Kate Seacor, she, her. Mitch Chair, one of the things that I've heard over and over and over again is we have to have change. We have to test our changes. Can we not test in production? The major intent of F.15 is to provide a mechanism by which we can test all of our actual changes in a meaningful way before we get to the meeting and say, oh, let's just do it completely differently in a way that we've never seen. We're going to have to have a mechanism to do it somewhere. If we postpone every possible attempt to do that, we're stuck with only making changes live. I don't think that's a good idea. Can we at least talk about it? Okay, that was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Is it on my what is your inquiry? Um, has this been broken? I wasn't here. Has this been broken into sections? No, this has not been divided. It is the entire item F15 as proposed. If things are divided, I will note that. The member may now speak to it, or against it, rather. I'm you. Yeah. Yes. Harry and Lurie Sheher. Uh, I think this is the perfect thing to refer to the Business Meeting Study Committee, and therefore I would be opposed to postponing indefinitely. That was a speech against postponement. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The motion to postpone indefinitely requires a two-thirds majority. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? The motion does not pass, and it is not postponed. The four minutes doesn't come out of the debate time, by the way. Um, so I had set a debate time of six minutes for this, and that's where we're at. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak in favor? Yes. 
Kate Seacor, she, her. And it's kind of the speech I just made, right? It is very clear from a lot of the discussions that are happening in the room, out of the room, and online, that changes are coming, right? That we need to think about ways that we can make the meeting more accessible, ways that we can make the meeting have more entry points, have easier entry points, have more time, right? If we had been debating this stuff all year, this meeting would take half an hour. We have no official mechanism to do that. We have no way to do it in a way that counts, or that has any kind of regulation or requirement to report back or anything. The intent of this motion is to supply that mechanism, to give us a chance to say, you know what? Sure, here's an agenda. You want to try Martha's rules? You want to try all online? You want to try doing it with carrier pigeons? Great, here's how you do that. Go, have an agenda, but have meaningful debate. Have meaningful results. Accomplish something with your time so that the people that do it aren't just playing, right? We need to test our changes. The changes are coming. That's what this is for. There was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? In the front. Kevin Sandler, Lee him. Thank you, Dr. Murray. I move to uh, refer this motion to the Business Meeting Study Committee. Mm -hmm. It's been moved and seconded to refer F15 to the Business Meeting Study Group, chaired by Colin and Farah. Um, I'm going to set debate time on the referral to two minutes. Is there any objection? Two minutes. Very none. Debate time is set at two minutes. Do you wish to speak to it? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I speak in favor of the referral. Uh, I do actually, I, I, I grant much respect to my colleague uh, personally. I think our current government system of a mass meeting is the wrong form. I would like an elected council. But in any event, this is not necessarily a bad idea, but I believe the study committee needs to throw this in with the huge amount of other things they're given and try and come up with a somewhat less incoherent set of suggestions. Okay, that was a speech in favor of referral. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, on the side. Let's go to him. This is not against, but I do move to amend to add the proviso that Ms. Secor be put on that committee. Okay, so this is an amendment to the referral specifying that Kate Secor be added to the business meeting study group committee. Second. And we have consent. That's great. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I'm going to, if there's no objection, we're going to move straight to a vote. Actually, is there any objection to that instruction? Hearing none, it's been amended. Um, and so what is now before us is still the referral with the additional instruction that Kate Secor be on the committee. Um, I believe we're at a speech against referral. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of referral? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring at 15 to the Hugo Business or product Business Meeting Study Group, raise the hand. I see that you have all done so, thank you. All those against, raise the hand, and it is referred. makes the next item before us F-16. Okay. Okay, which is on page 53 of your agenda. For what purpose does the member rise? Mr. Chair, Mr. President, I, um, I move to suspend the rules and adjourn today. It has been moved it, it has been moved that we suspend the rules to adjourn CNA Diet. Is there a second? <coughs> Hearing none, it is not before us. Okay, so what's before us is F-16. When we censure you, we mean it to be made not found on page 53. I'm recommending a total debate time of this item for this item of four minutes. Is there any objection to four minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at four minutes. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak to it? Uh, parliamentary procedure. When do I offer an amendment? You, the question is when an amendment would be in order. An amendment it is, is in order when you are recognized to speak. You can rise to speak either in favor or against if you wish to make an amendment. And if I recognize you, then you may make an amendment. 
Does the maker of F F16 wish to speak to it? May I, may I make a motion to post, postpone indefinitely? It would be in order to postpone indefinitely. Second. Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to postpone indefinitely. Debate time is set automatically at four minutes. This does not come out of the time allotted for the item. Do you wish to speak to postponing indefinitely? No. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? <laughs> I know I don't need to, but I should make the case for it, I think. Uh, Kevin Stanley, he, him, makes chairperson. While I understand the intent behind it, I don't necessarily disagree. I understand the passion behind it. I don't believe that it is a productive use of this meeting's time to discuss this matter any further at this time. Okay, that is a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak against it? Well, yes. The maker of the actual thing can't speak against it. They're not allowed to. Kate <laughs> Seacor, she, her. Mixed chair, right now, our options when somebody commits personal reasons is to go, don't do that again. We don't like you. And maybe to hope that people. Sorry. And maybe to hope that people hear about it before they vote for the next thing. If we're going to go to all the trouble of looking into someone and investigating and saying, this was a bad thing, it happened, you were responsible, we should put some teeth behind it. Or at least talk about putting some teeth behind it. That was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? At the front. Linda Robinette, she heard there already is a method. Individuals have been refused entry into world cons. It only lasts a year. This thing would go five years. I think it should be only done on an individual basis. That is a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I'm going to end the brown. Chairperson, Greg Richards, he, him. The problem with it being the World Cons to refuse someone a membership is that that it's up to the World Con. When someone has trespassed <coughs> against Wispus, it should be to the business meeting and the representatives of Wispus to make a decision as to what is the appropriate consequences. That is a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone else pushing to speak in favor? Okay. Thank you. A single business meeting should not have the power to Please state your name. Sorry, thank you. Joshua Cronenbold, he, him. A single business meeting should not have the power to ban someone from the World Cup for five years. That is a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, in the blue at the front. Perry and Lurie, she, her. This isn't about refusing people entry to World Cup. It's, it's keeping them off committees. That is a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? I'm going to recognize the member in the blue and ask how much time is remaining on each side. We have a minute 19 seconds remaining for and a minute 10 seconds against. Uh, Leslie Turk, she heard. Leslie Turk, she heard. Um, I have been present at World Cup business meetings that have, someone used earlier the word investigate. World Cup business meetings don't investigate. I've been at business meetings where someone was censured, and then the following day the censure had to be revoked because additional information was learned. So I don't think anything should be based on a censure by the business meeting. That was a speech in favor. If there are any wishing to speak, I will remind the body that indicating your agreement with the speech is not in order. Is there anyone wishing to speak in, against postponing indefinitely? in the middle-ish area. Alana Vincent, she, her. I take the point about that previous incident, but this business meeting, 
chose to impanel an investigative committee, which will report to next year's business meeting. That is proper parliamentary procedure on investigation, and it is clearly not the action of a single business meeting. That is a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there any? I know I did want to wait to see if anybody else could get a second one. I don't think you can get a second one until even people wishing to speak against have. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Second time speaking on this, I want to bring up to remind the members of one of the purposes of postponement. <coughs> it is not necessarily to yes or no you're in favor of censuring or not censuring. It is a statement in many ways that you don't think that the business meeting should be discussing this matter. Not that it is sub substantially objectionable enough for an objection to consideration, but enough that you don't want the business meeting to take a position for or against the underlying matter. Postponing this matter indefinitely does not say we like it or we don't like it. It says we don't want to vote on it. Thank you. That is a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone who to speak against? At the front. him. I agree with the colleague who spoke right before me about the purpose of postponing indefinitely, and frankly, that's why we should vote it down. Even if you disagree with the underlying motion, I think the business meeting should weigh in on this. That was a speech against postponing indefinitely. How are we doing on time? We have 20 seconds remaining. Four and 39 against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. Or, yep. You wish to speak against? I wish to speak against. You wish to speak against postponing indefinitely. If the business meeting has the right to censure, it should have the right to determine the punishment for that censure. That was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. This requires a two thirds vote. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please raise the hand. Thank you. Thank you. All those against? That's close. If there's a question, I call for division. Second. There is not a question. It does not pass. Thank you. It wasn't that close. Um, Okay, uh, that was now a two-thirds majority, and the motion to postpone indefinitely does not pass. I set debate time on this at four minutes. We have had a significant amount of debate about the motion. Is there any objection to reducing further debate time to two minutes? Move to amend. That is not in order at the moment. I'm asking if there's any objection to setting the debate time on the underlying motion to two minutes. Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Does the maker of the motion wish to speak in favor of it? Okay, they do not. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, are you moving to suspend the rules and call the question, presumably? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded to suspend the rules and call the question. Is there, well, I know there's somebody wishing to speak on this matter. So, we will move immediately to a vote. This requires a two-thirds majority and is neither debatable nor amendable, both suspending the rules and calling the question. So, we are going to take this up as one vote. So if this vote passes by a two-thirds majority, the question will be called and we will move immediately to a vote on F-16. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? The motion passes and the question has been called and we will move immediately to a vote on F-16. All those in favor of F-16, please raise the hand. All those against? And the motion does not pass and F-16 is defeated. So by my notes, what we have next, what we have left, is F-19 and F-20. 
So I'm, I'm going to ask the sense of the body. It's 12.02 and our lunch break is at 12.15. Would you all like to just keep going? And because I believe all that we have left is F19 and F20. I think I have heard that there might be some other things coming as well. So given that, given that what we have left is F19, F20, and I believe at least one reconsideration of a prior vote, does the body wish to keep going? And if we hit 12.45, we'd go ahead and take our lunch break, because at a certain point I have to give you all lunch. Or do you all wish to just go ahead and take our lunch break? I'd call it early and take it now. I know straw polls aren't in order, but I'm going to do one. All those in favor of um, just keeping going and not taking our lunch break at 12.15, raise the hand. Okay, all those in favor of taking our lunch break now? Okay, I'm not doing a division on this nonsense, y'all. Okay, I'm going to say that given, I, I'm going to put preference to the thing that was printed in the agenda ahead of time that is what members of the body were notified was the schedule. And so we are going to go ahead and take our lunch break now. And we are going to be back in session in 45 minutes at 1249. We are in recess. by some of them for other reasons than mine. I am particularly concerned that no Worldcon would have given the retro Hugo that they were, um, that, that, that there was being, it is being attributed to them. Uh, and the s sense of hindsight that we have is frankly very poor and frankly very colored. Uh, it, 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 things do not look the same to us as they did to us in, in, in 1950s or 40s, and uh, they definitely don't look the same as they will in the future. I think we're not qualified to do this, I think we're not appropriate for us to do this, and I think we should remove them from our Constitution. Okay, that was the speech in favor. For what purpose does the member rise? Okay, so in case you weren't here earlier, I'm going to ask that you will not pop up until after I've asked for a speech against, so that I can see if people are wishing to make privileged motions. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? And I will recognize the member in the red. David Hook. Um, I have mixed feelings about this, but I do feel that this uh, particular proposal is unnecessary. Um, even though the percentage of people that are nominating and voting on these retro Hugos has dropped dramatically since they were first first done from 25% down to about 8% last time around. It's unnecessary because the world cons are already voting with their feet. The last three that could have done it have just decided not to do it. And they can continue not to do that. Um, so I do think this is an unnecessary thing to do. And for that reason, I oppose it. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the front. Kevin Stanley, he and mixed chair person. The late Bruce Pells, who many of you know and some of you don't, because Bruce has been gone a while now. The late Bruce Pells was the primary mover behind the retro Hugos. He initially, as I recall from having discussed it with him while they were working through this, really wanted to just give one moral con an opportunity to do this 
And it, they concluded that the only way to do it legitimately was to create it generally. But clearly, for those of you who have read The Moon is a Harsh Mistress and sound this phrase elsewhere, Bruce very much said, and I believe he spoke in debate saying this, that this is a funny once. And we've gone well past the, the use-by of this, and I think it's time to retire it. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak again? <coughs> purple. My name is Cora Bulat, and um, I'm actually the proposer of F20, so I guess we can maybe Maybe I can maybe make this speech also a speech in favor of F20. And um, for those of you who know me, I've done a lot of work for the Retro Yugos because I was frustrated by bad winners, by weak stories from future stars winning, <coughs> winning by things winning or by racist Wonder Woman comics winning, winning. And so I decided to make the Retro Yugo better. I started a project to review as many eligible works for, in that case, it was 1944 as possible. And um, those, and I reviewed more than 35 stories, found a lot of interesting works, works, and um, got other people to join me and hope to raise some interest in the retro heroes. And uh, I actually feel as if all my hard work has been in vain in favor of the retro heroes because uh, basically people who never gave a damn, pardon my language, about them before, suddenly decided the retro heroes were very bad, very racist, and everything. Because people voted for John W. Campbell, yes. I mean, he's almost impossible to beat, but uh, beat, but maybe they could have thrown their way behind someone else. I threw mine behind Dorsey McElroy's of Weird Tales. And also, as, um, also as um, Dave Hook said, this motion is completely unnecessary because um, world cons already have the freedom not to do the retro use if they choose not to. And I want to retain this freedom for the for the world cons because I know retro Hugos are a lot of work for the Hugo administration team. They cost money for the trophies and the, and the ceremony. And there's often no one to give these trophies to. And I'm not sure if we even need trophies. But I think we should retain the ability for WorldCon to host retro Hugos should they wish to do so. Do so because uh, our fault, we wouldn't be here without the writers, the fans, the artists who worked in the 1930s, 40s, 50s. 50s. They are our forebearers, and I think we deserve to honor them, especially Ten if they're. Sorry? Ten seconds. Especially if the regular Hugos never got around to them. Also, I'm really sorry for coming up the business meeting with this, with, but the other proposal forced me to. Thank you very much. Okay, that was a speech again. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Okay, in the back, right, my right, your left. Yes, you hear it. Gareth Cameron, he, him. I have long considered placing this motion on the body. I do think that the retro you goes wild, a fun little thing, have quite a strong impression. It is almost impossible for us to say what works would have won the Hugo of the Year, and often we are not voting on the works that are relevant, but for the career of the person that came years afterwards. It is unrepresentative and it is just not good. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Time. What? Yeah, time again has elapsed. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Uh, in the blue, 20 seconds, 28 seconds. East, Jill Eastlake, Mix Chairman. I ran the Retro Hugo presentation show in 2004. One, comma, one of the nominees showed up and he told me that he thought that the retro goods should not be done. And I said, yeah, well, we're going to have a nice ceremony anyway, but I agree. 
time, that was a speech in favor. Uh, time for debate has elapsed. And so if there are no other matters, we'll move to a vote. It's been moved to dispense, extend debate by one minute on each side. Is there a second? Hearing none, debate is not extended. No, Ken was making sure I knew that one times two was two. Um, is there, is, does the person on the side have something for me? Yes. They should bring it up. Um, okay, are we ready to move to a vote? All those in favor of F-19, no more retros, please raise the hand. <coughs> Thank you. All those against? Okay, and the motion passes and F-19 is adopted. Given that F-19 has been adopted, F-20 would no longer be in order as it I guess that's true, we could ratify one and not the other. I guess we'd really be Seattle, which they couldn't do both. Okay, never mind, we'll take up F.20. Um, cool. Okay, the item now before us is F.20. I'm going to recommend a debate time of six minutes for this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Yeah. Hearing none, debate is set at six minutes. Pardon, Madam Chair, what are they Yes. These are ratifications, not adopted, right? Nope, these are new constitutional changes. They are not ratifications. Okay. Does the maker of the motion, I know the maker of the motion kind of spoke in favor of it already, but do you wish to speak in favor of it additionally, or do you wish one of your fellow proposers to? Okay. Yep, all recognize Chris Barkley for a speech in favor. Chris Barkley, he, him. Uh, this is chairperson. It seems unnecessary for the prior motion to have passed, but it passed. All I have to say is this. A, let us complete the job. Let us complete what needs to be completed. And B, see you in Seattle. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there any motion to speak against? <coughs> Okay, hold on. The question was a motion to postpone indefinitely, and if it was too late. It is not too late. Object to consideration is the only thing that has to happen immediately. Postpone indefinitely does not. However, postpone indefinitely is not a privileged motion, and I was about to recognize the person in the chat. So I'm going to recognize the person in the plaid and vest. Motion to amend. A motion to amend would be in order. Yes. And I believe uh, the head table has the uh, text for the amendment here. Dave. Oh, Dave, David Wallace, or Dave Wallace, uh, he, him. And uh, basically, I, I move to amend by adding an additional section to this, uh, which is intended to allow extra time for voters to consider retrospective Hugos by allowing a convention to delegate to the previous convention the nominations so that nominations can be done a year in advance of the Red goes, therefore allowing uh, an extra year, essentially, for people to consider the Red goes outside of the time when they're trying to do the regular Hugo reading, which is basically crowded out all the time. And I think that is one of the issues here. So basically, uh, Okay, we're gonna have a brief standing pause while we work on getting that slide ready. Sure. Um, you did send it to us in advance, and it, there's a lot of emails that have come into business meeting that in the past few days, and we just missed getting a slide made, so one moment. Okay, fine.
sorry, Google Slides just froze. Give us one moment. Okay, we know that the text is small. The parliamentarian is working on editing it. Um, I'm going to read the full text while the parliamentarian works on it. Um, so this is to add an additional section, 3.14.3, that reads, in order to allow extra time for voters to consider retrospective Hugo works, a Worldcon that chooses to host retrospective year Hugo Awards may choose, with the consent of the previous seated Worldcon, to, to delegate the nomination of retrospective finalists to that previous seated Worldcon. In that case, the previous Worldcon will conduct the nominations and announce the finalists with the same procedures and eligible nominators as used for their own Hugo nominations. The host Worldcon will conduct the final award voting for the retrospective Hugo Awards at the same time and with the same voters as their own Hugo Award final award voting. The publication of the final rounds of the finalist selection procedure for the retrospective Hugo Awards may be published by either Worldcon in accordance with their own publication of such data for the regular Hugos as established by agreement between them. If the two Worldcons are not able to agree on the delegation of retrospective nominations to the previous Worldcon, then the host Worldcon will conduct nominations in accordance with its own Hugo procedures. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. <coughs> I understand that the text is small, but given that I read it and that the text is on the screen, do you feel that you have an understanding of the amendment? Okay. How much time is we have? Well, we have one speech, so presumably we have basically all the time. So. This is an amendment, so the total time for debate is five minutes, split evenly. Do you wish to speak to your amendment? Yes. Please do. Thank you. Basically, my argument is, if, uh, given that there are people that want to finish out the remaining seven or possibly eight years of the retrospective Hugos, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's make it possible to make the retrospective Hugos the best retrospective Hugos we can. Yeah. And I had three amendments to the retrospective Hugo's to propose next year. This is the only one that really needs to happen this year. And the reason is because in order for this, if F20 uh, if were to pass, the first eligible year would be the 1947 Hugo's. It would be ratified next year in 2015. And if we, make, if we attach this as the amendment, the, the, at the 2017, uh, 2027 convention, which would be the first one to hold the, the uh, 47 Hugos, wanted to do this, they could immediately ask the LA, which, which we now know to be the 26th convention, if they would please hold the nominations for them. Uh, otherwise, we, we couldn't fit this in within the uh, ratification delegates. The other two things can wait. Uh, the, but again, my, my intention is to make this the best possible retrospective Hugo as we can. I know they need work. I think this would make a big difference because I think the biggest single thing in the problems with the retro Hugos is that they are direct, the reading for them is directly in conflict with the regular Hugos, with all the additional stuff that we've passed, the, the additional categories, the additional nominees in each categories. There's less and less time for people to actually read the retrospective Hugos. So they do things like vote for the one author they recognize, even if that's you know somebody who's not representative. The one retrospective Hugo's that I, in my time at Worldcon, which started in 2015, that I thought really worked was the 2016 retro Hugo's. And I realized, looking back at that, that part of the reason why I felt they really worked was because there was so much crap on the regular Hugo ballot that year, I had plenty of time to do the reading for the retrospective Hugo's and therefore was able to get a good perspective of Sorry, what the nominees were. So I urge you to pass this so that we can make the retrospective Hugo's the best that we possibly can. Okay, time in favor of the amendment has elapsed. 
Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Oh, okay. You okay? I am going to recognize uh, Nicholas White behind you, though. Sorry to make you re-stand up again. Thank you, Mr. Person. Mr. Chair Person. Nicholas White, he, him. Um, I have administered the Retro Hugo several times in 2020, 2021, if uh, memory, possibly even 2019. I've lost track slightly. Yes, I think all three years. Um, the problem with the Retro Hugo is not the lack of reading time. To be honest, if you give Wisps for Soldiers, a hundred days, they will read everything in the last five days, and you give them three hundred days, they will read everything in the last five days. That's not the issue. Uh, the issue is that the level of interest in the retro Hugos has been gradually decreasing. Um, I frankly don't think that we needed to have taken time up at this meeting to discuss how they could be improved. Um, I don't particularly like the current arrangement. I don't really see that uh, there are tweaks that are going to make it much better. I'd much rather leave things be and leave to the discussion of individual world cons. And folks, we really wanted to free up the, the reading time that voters have to consume everything that is in front of the Hugos. We would be abolishing best series and not tinkering with the retros. Thank you. The last section was not germane. Um, <laughs> give back five seconds of time. Um, time in favor has elapsed. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Is the person in the back wishing to speak or just standing? I think you're just standing. No, no, Sorry. Wait, that's fine. I just needed to know. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? I think that was a wave and not wishing to speak against, but for clarity. Try not to make sudden movements when I'm asking for speeches. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Okay, then you can come make it. Uh, well, Mr. White substantively made the points I was going to make about the fact that the reading time and the fact that you still have problems in what you have to read. Uh, I believe that this amendment unduly burdens the, I understand that there's a chance that they don't need to, but I think that putting all of the negotiating into the previous world time. Look at them. Look at them. Now, putting all the time into the previous Worldcon to decide if they can indeed handle this job that might be dumped on them is unnecessary. Okay, that was the speech against. How much time is remaining against? Uh, we have one minute and eight seconds remaining against. Okay, time in favor has elapsed. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against the amendment? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment, which is to add the text on the screen to the end of F.20, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the amendment is not adopted. We are back to F.20 as before us in the agenda. We have a bit of time remaining on both sides. Yes, one moment. We have 41 seconds remaining in favor and two minutes 11 seconds remaining against. Okay. Is there anyone, anyone are you, do you rise for a privileged motion? Well, wait, wait, um, sorry, the second time I did it. I apologize. It's been a long time since we've met. Your mic is off. Oh. Do you, do you need to update the time? Yeah, I just okay. For what purpose do you rise? Call the question. Second. You want to call the question? It's been seconded. Okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak on F20 for any purpose, including making amendments? Yes. Okay, so we will move to a vote on calling the question. This requires a two-thirds vote. We'll close debate as well as the making of any subsidiary amendments. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, 
Thank you. And the question is called and debate is ended and we'll move to a vote on F20. All those in favor of F20, save the retro Hugos, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion is defeated and is not adopted. I will now recognize Mr. Dunn for a motion. Cliff Dunn, he, him. I sincerely apologize to the body for making this, but in light of the Hugo voting statistics published last night, I move to reconsider the extension granted to Godzilla minus one. Okay, you've made a motion to reconsider, which would not be in order given that, I, I know, but let me explain why. That would not be in order given that we did that on the first day and it's been more than one day since then. So I believe that you are wishing to suspend the rules to do so. Yes, and I'm just exhausted as well. <laughs> That's fine. So a motion to suspend the rules requires a two-thirds vote. The motion to reconsider requires a majority vote. Also, I don't believe the member voted on the prevailing side, so but we're going to wrap that into the suspension. So we're first going to vote on the suspension of the rules, which requires a two-thirds vote and is neither debatable nor amendable. Let me finish what I'm saying and then I'll recognize you. If the suspension of the rules passes, then we will vote on whether or not to reconsider the item. Then if we vote in favor of reconsidering the item, then we will vote on the item after presumably some debate. For what purpose did the member in the back rise? As the maker of the initial motion, I'm hoping to speak in favor of the reconsideration. Okay, so the maker of the or original motion wishes to speak in favor of the reconsideration. I will note that the motion to suspend the rules is not debatable. But if we get to reconsideration, we'll take that up. Okay, so the, I, what is before us is the motion to suspend the rules to allow us to do the rest of this and reconsider F dot something, the Hugo the eligibility extension for the thing about Godzilla. Okay, all those in, look, I don't have the entire agenda memorized. Shocking. Um, all those in favor of suspending the rules, please raise the hand. Okay, thank you. All those against, and the motion passes, especially with all the extra hands that went up during the time for voting. Okay, so the motion to suspend the rules has passed, and so what is now before us is reconsideration of F dot, or D, yeah, D dot four. Okay, this requires a majority vote. I'm going to set debate on the reconsideration since the motion to reconsider can get into debate on the underlying matter, I'm going to say that the total debate time for the reconsideration and the item should the reconsideration pass, it pass will be two minutes with the fours and the yeses and noes sort of the same on both matter. Is there any objection to two minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at two minutes. Does the maker of the motion to reconsider wish to speak in favor or do they wish to cede to? I prefer to speak to him. Okay, I will recognize the member in the back for a speech in favor of reconsideration. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, my name is Olav Rockney, pronouns he, him. And I never make extension of eligibility motions spuriously or frivolously and uh, Cora and I worked on this together. And uh, we did not have all of the data available to us and knowing that it did get a fair shake in uh, this year's Hugo's, I, who moved this, am in favor of undoing it. That was a speech in favor of reconsideration. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Yes? Move to call the question on all pending questions. Okay, the motion, it's been moved and seconded to call the question on all matters before us. Is there anyone still wishing to speak on either reconsideration or should reconsideration pass D.4? Seeing none, we will move to a vote on both matters. The first question that is before us is reconsideration of D.4. 
So what that means is that if you want to vote again on D.4, regardless of which side you want to vote on, you would vote yes for reconsideration. You would vote no if you do not wish to vote again on D.4. Are we clear? Okay. All those in favor of reconsidering D.4, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion passes. And so what is before us is D.4, which was previously adopted. There was the, nobody was wishing to speak, and so we are moving straight to a vote. So all those, and so to be clear, this was the eligibility extension for Gojiro 1.0, AKA Godzilla minus one. All those in favor of the Hugo eligibility extension for this piece, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And D.4 is now defeated. I believe that concludes everything we have before us. Before I entertain a motion to adjourn CNEDIA, I have some announcements and some thanks to give. So I'm going to do that first. Okay, here we go. As I said at the beginning of the meeting, if you are interested in joining the Hugo uh, study group or the business meeting study group, please email your interest to businessmeeting at glasgow2024.org by 5 p.m. BST on Friday. We will pass along your interest to the chair of that committee or chairs of those committees and acknowledge the receipt of your email. You should not expect to get that acknowledgement until probably like Thursday at the earliest because we have lives and homes to get back to. Let's see. Uh, great. Okay. So, as I stated previously, the video recordings from the live stream, I believe, are already available for replay on the member portal. I apologize for the delay in that happening. We also have the recordings to be uploaded and published to the Worldcon events page. In addition, the recordings that Lisa Hayes has been making are currently available, at least the first three days, on Kevin Stanley's personal YouTube page. If you would like that address, go talk to Kevin and he can get it to you. All right, those are all the announcements. Okay, thanks, I have a lot of them. First of all, I wanna thank the hotel staff who've been amazing to work with and very flexible, um, and especially to the chef and the staff for figuring out a way to help get us fed so that we could get through this agenda. So thank you to them. I want to thank Kevin Sonny, Kevin Stanley, and Cliff Dunn for helping to provide the coffee and tea services on various days. I want to thank our captioning services, the name of the company of which I should remember but don't. Uh, three Play. I want to thank our captioners from Three Play who have been. Uh, I mean, I'm not seeing it most of the time, but I understand they're generally doing quite a good job. So I want to thank them so much for their service, especially given all of the fun jargon we use. I want to thank Kate Secor and the other Discord recorders for their <laughs> efforts in helping to keep folks who aren't here um, up on what is happening via text communication in the Discord channel. I want to thank Lisa Hayes for doing some additional video recording. I want to thank Ron Oakes for helping out with the AV tech, um, and also Alan Vaughn who helped out on the first day. Um, so thank you so much. I want to thank Linda Denneroff who stepped up at the literal last minute to be our secretary when Alex Axe was no longer able to be with us, and so thank you so much. Unfortunately, <laughs> even when we try to give you the year off, it apparently doesn't happen. So, um, And then further, I would like to thank the rest of my staff. I have said many times over the past several months to Warren and Alex and Martin, Martin and Ira and Jared that, well, and Chris, although it's not actually applicable to Chris, that they did not sign up for this. 
None of us knew what the agenda for this meeting was going to look like when we agreed to take on this role. And for many of them, this is their first time at the head table or being on business meeting staff. I am so incredibly glad to have the team that I have had for this year. I cannot imagine doing it with a different team. I cannot imagine having gotten through it without these folks. And so for my entire staff, I extend my sincerest and most profuse thanks. consent to a motion to thank the chair who has done a spectacular job on her unimaginable <laughs> through this 20-hour process. Let's never, ever do it again. <laughs> and at that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn CNA dying. I am aware, I was going to say the last part, okay. So, having heard it from like 15 of you, if there is no objection, we will adjourn CNA dying. Thank you, him. I'd like to uh, remind people that there will be an architecture committee meeting in this room, delayed from the originally scheduled time on the calendar due to the extensive uh, business here. So we'll be meeting at 1.45 uh, in this room for the architecture committee, which is open to all the listless members. Thank you. I'm sorry. I have a long list, and I just missed that on my notes. Okay. So I'm going to try and get through this. We're going to adjourn CNA in honor of Deb Geisler, and that concludes this year's business meeting. <laughs>